Hey guys, welcome back. We're getting there. We're getting closer to our Triduum. We made it to Holy Tuesday. If you were with us yesterday, you remember that we're talking about what happened with Jesus from the time he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday until he got to Holy Thursday and the Passion through Easter Sunday. We heard yesterday the Gospel according to Luke tell us that every day he was teaching in the temple. But what was he teaching? Well, you can read about it in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark and Luke. And he had a lot of stuff he was teaching. I don't know how he managed to teach all of that stuff in such a short amount of time. And since I have even less time, I can't go through all of it. So I'm going to just hit the highlights. The first lesson we're going to talk about was actually happening outside of the temple. He was hungry and he was passing by a fig tree. He looked on the fig tree, but there were no figs. All right, so maybe between his hunger and being a little angry still from when he was at the front of the temple and seeing the money changers and the dove salesmen that were cheating everybody, maybe he was still a little angry. So you know what he did? He turned to the tree and he said, may no fruit ever come to you again. You know what happened? The tree just withered and died. Done. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd be surprised if a tree just ye just died because someone yelled at him. All right, not just any someone. I know he was Jesus and he could do anything. So I know I was surprised, but guess what? His disciples were also surprised. And they wanted to know, how'd you do that? So Jesus told them, faith. Even better, he told them specifically, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only will you do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. Whatever you ask for in prayer, with faith, you will receive. Wow, faith is pretty powerful. And without it, we could forget all the things that God can do. Because he can do everything, anything he wants. And if we lose that faith, we also lose hope. We can't afford to do that. We also, without it, can't remember the big lesson that he taught his disciples while he was in Jerusalem. Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Now the law is the first five books of the Bible. And that's everything that Jesus and Jewish people of the time were following. They were following it as well, law. So this guy thought he was going to trick Jesus by asking him about the greatest commandment. We all know that there are 10 commandments. But did you know in those five books in the beginning of the Bible, there are over 600 more rules and commandments that they're expected to follow. How is Jesus supposed to pick which one is the greatest? Well, he didn't. Instead, he made a new commandment. And he did an awesome job summarizing those 613 commandments in two sentences. First one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And the second one, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then he told everyone on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Think about it. Look at the first one. The first three commandments of the 10 biggies one God, no idols, don't take the Lord's name in vain, keep the Sabbath. Well, if you do that first commandment, loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, then you've got all three of those biggies covered. Similarly, those other seven, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, all those nasty things. Well, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you're never going to do those things. 
talk about your perfect summary. So there were so many awesome lessons, just in those two, but so many more. Come back tomorrow. We'll talk about a few more of the lessons that Jesus taught between Jerusalem, between entering Jerusalem and the Lord's Supper. Read the Gospel. The Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The Gospel of John has some of the information, but he's left out a lot of the details from this time in Jesus' life. So in the meantime, let's close together with a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to us, not only to be our Savior, but to be our teacher. The lessons he taught the disciples about the power of faith and the greatest commandment are just as relevant today. Please send us your spirit as a reminder of the lessons that you have given us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.